Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining rotational inertia. Now this is a continuation of last week's video which was on rotational inertia. So if you haven't seen that one first, I'll link it in the description and uh, you should check that one out before watching this video. Now as we discussed last time, any reduction in rotational inertia means you're going to increase the amount of available horsepower you have. So literally if you were to take your car and go get it ran at an engine dyno, um, what they would say is, okay, here's your horsepower numbers, and then if you took out, if you reduce the rotational inertia of all of your components, your rotating components, and then ran the same dyno test again under the same conditions, you would actually show a higher horsepower number. And that's because you've eliminated, you've freed up some horsepower that you're wasting uh, into rotating components. So, I'm going to talk about some of the different things uh, and, and how uh, these reductions um, mean you're going to accelerate quicker. So one of the easiest ways to talk about this is equivalent mass. And this is a way to express the effects of an object's moment of inertia on acceleration. So an example would be um, by removing one pound of your tire in, in each of your tire, if there was some compound that was lighter and just as strong and everything, and you could remove it from your tires, well that may be worth removing an equivalent mass of say two pounds. So what that means is the effects are the same as removing two pounds from your car on acceleration. So if you've seen my video on uh, the effects of acceleration, uh, the effects of weight on acceleration, then you would understand, okay, well, two pounds means I can accelerate this much quicker. So you may want to check out that video. But basically, your different rotating components, uh, removing one pound from these rotational components is actually worth more as far as acceleration is concerned uh, than one pound. It's, it's kind of like removing two pounds or something like that. With the flywheel, it could be, be, even be as high as something like eight pounds, depending on what gear you're in. So that's another thing I want to talk about is the engine components depend on what gear you're in. So for example, when you're in first gear, your flywheel may rotate, depending on gearing, nine times for your wheel to rotate once. Uh, and when you're in fourth gear, your flywheel may rotate three times in order for your wheel to rotate once. So what that's telling us is the effects of moment of inertia are greater in your lower gears because they're rotating more times for your wheel to rotate one time. So uh, the important thing to get out of that is you will have higher equivalent masses in lower gears than in higher gears for engine components. Things like wheels, obviously, they're always uh, going to be rotating the same amount with the speed of your car. Um, now, another thing is, well, how does rotational inertia affect braking? And the, the, real, the real answer is, well, it would be the exact same, assuming that uh, traction wasn't the issue. So, theoretically, if uh, your car just can't stop it at maximum grip, and your brakes aren't powerful enough to stop your tires from moving, then by reducing rotational inertia of these components, like your uh, brake discs, your wheels, things like that, then you are going to increase uh, your stopping, or decrease your stopping distance. So the thing to, to think about there is if you put your car in neutral, obviously none of the engine components are going to matter. Um, but nonetheless, tires generally are the limiting factor for braking. So it's that friction that causes uh, whether or not you can stop earlier, not necessarily the rotational inertia. But nonetheless, it, it could help, and it does give you the benefits of you'll have reduced brake fade and, and reduced brake wear because you don't have to stop as much force. You don't have to use as much energy to stop your car. Um, but as I was saying, traction is a, is a big thing here because it can't be the limiting factor in order to have faster acceleration. So for example, if you're in first gear and you floor it and your tires spin, well, even if you re reduce the inertia of your tires, your tires are still going to spin and you're not going to accelerate quicker. But then again, when you're in maybe sixth gear and you floor it, it's very unlikely that you can still spin your tires because of the torque loss uh, from, from the gearing. And so you would still get a benefit in higher gears from reducing your rotational inertia. Uh, and what I'm going to include a link to in my description so that you can check out is a website. I, I thought it did a great job of, uh, it, it gives you the equivalent masses. So if you say, okay, I'm taking one pound out of my flywheel and these are the dimensions, or I'm reducing its moment of inertia by doing this, 
then it gives you an equivalent mass. And then you can take that equivalent mass and use my uh, video on removing weight to increase acceleration, and you can see how, by swapping out different components, you could increase your acceleration of your car. So thanks for watching.